brain for life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we are on the fourth segment of the Automotive ADHD Show. It's right here as a podcast on the radio as well. And now on video, YouTube, and Rumble, you can see the show for better or for worse. And uh, sitting alongside me right now is a ASE certified technician. He does performance tuning. He's an automotive degenerate. Some know him as the wise one. The rest of us know him as OBD1 Kenobi or Brian. Brian is fine too. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, 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 so um, if you're watching on video, you can actually see him sitting next to me and we can get like this is so unusual to be on camera. We right can now. we can get awkwardly close to each other. Oh, um, but Brian is joining me on the show because um, I have dragged him onto the show without really his consent. And um, I knew about 15 minutes ago, I think. Yeah, that I was going to be on camera. Yeah. So uh, but here you are and uh, wearing a shirt that is fitting of that, too. What, what does your shirt say here? I may be wrong, but I doubt it. But I doubt it, it says. Yep, yep. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to address a listener-submitted question. Um, Tane from Australia, uh, and hopefully, hopefully I'm getting your name pronounced right on that one, but Tane asks, um, he says that he is working on a special build, and, um, and what he wants to know here is uh, he says he's currently building a whole, I'm assuming it's a Holden F E Holden. I'm assuming that's a Holden, but he says he is building a car as a bonding experience with his grandpa and his father. And he wants to know my opinion. And I have dragged Brian into this as well. Yes. He, he wants to, he, he's already making the noises. You know what this is going to do, right? Um, so he wants to know essentially on this build with his father and his grandfather, should he go a spinny stutu boy, as he says, or a whiny box supercharger. So the question is turbo or supercharger. Brian, what do you think? Supercharger. Supercharger? That might have been a reason why I played Devin's supercharged car noises in the beginning of this. You already segment. knew I was going to be biased on yep, this. Yep. You already knew. So, okay. Why supercharger then over turbo? It's definitely more expensive, but I'll tell you there's going to be less hassle with it. This, I'm, this is an LS car, isn't it? I, Holden, right? I, I'm assuming, yeah. I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's, an assuming LS it's a V8. Car. So yeah. yeah, this should be this should be something that should be fairly easy to to do. Yeah, especially over plumbing a turbocharger, it's way easier to tune. Okay, I'd okay. say the only thing that's hard about tuning a supercharger is um, is with uh, depending on where the throttle body is located. If it's before or after the supercharger, it can be a little bit difficult to get to wind back down mm -hmm. after a pull. But other than that, it's, it's gravy. It's gravy. It's gravy, gravy. He says it's it's gravy. gravy. So, what would be some benefits though um, of doing a turbocharger? Would there be any benefit in your eyes of doing a turbocharger? On maybe that? peak peak Pe output. Peak output. Yeah. Overall, maybe. I mean, other than that, I, I would think the supercharger overall would be way funner. I've I did not realize how much fun superchargers are till you get one. Till <laughs> you get one, the, the, especially a, a a bigger one, not not the factory stuff. Get get a big Whipple, get something in the twos <laughs> really? or three liters of displacement, and then come back and say, tell me how it how it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I mean, you gotta love the supercharger noise for one. The noise just is, is so good. Yeah, especially with with the V eight backing it. I'm surprised I didn't get a ticket in Devin's car. Oh yeah. I get yep. a ticket in every other car but Devin's car. <laughs> now they say that I'm going to get a ticket in Devin's car. Well, you can't because he's got a blown transmission right That's now. That's true. You can't. That's another great part about superchargers. Miss so much torque. The torque. So yeah. much torque. The torque. Um, how much power was he putting down with that supercharger? So it was an older generation Whipple um, bolt-on kit for a uh, 5.3 LS. I think it's for like an early Tahoe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's a side mount, non-intercooled. With It had water meth injection, but we weren't using it. Um, at the dyno on E85 in my poor tune. <laughs> it your, did, your tunes are great, by the it way. It did don't, 530. Don't discount your tunes. Your tunes yeah. are awesome. It did 530 on a non-intercooled supercharger without the nitrous. Without the nitrous. How much with the nitrous? I think it was just under 600, but you have to realize that the numbers kept changing dramatically because the intake temps will rise super fast on a supercharger that's not intercooled. It It's really crazy to see how much compressing air on the fly will change those IATs like like that. We could be 40 degrees Celsius and make a pull and you will climb to 80C over 100C very quickly, especially without any cooling. 
Really? Really? Wow. So, and and so IATs, intake air temperature, that is really important when you're tuning. Why is that so, so relevant? And I'm, I'm moving your mic here because it's like slowly. I'm, I'm not used no, to this. No, it's slowly, it's, it's slowly falling. It's not tight well, enough. Well, I so do see go. some tape here. Yeah, it's shush, 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 shush. Don't worry about the tape. <laughs> it's, they can't see it. <laughs> um, Mostly with the pre-debt, I mean, for example, when we took it to the track and Devin had to do a burnout session, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me clarify. Let me give you context. This car is a 240. Yeah, a not, Volvo 240. Not, not, a, not a Nissan 240. It's not an S chassis. It's yeah. a Volvo no, it's a 240. Volvo 240. So it's, a, it's a brick. It is a brick. Yeah. It is a refrigerator with wheels. And an LS. That's and an charged. LS. Yeah. It doesn't come with the LS, clarifying that. Yeah, too. work on that. Yeah. But um, at, when, we, when we did the, the burnout pit, um, I had to keep telling Devin, let off. We have to go. He was having way too much fun, but uh, what what he didn't realize is that as I'm sitting there trying to hold on desperately to my laptop, his intake temps were climbing over 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. And the engine was cool. The engine, the cool temperature was 96 Celsius, Yeah, which is about operating. It did fine. But as you could tell, that is uh, way too hot for intake temps. <laughs> way too hot. I mean, that's we're getting close to the point where this engine's probably going to melt down. Okay. Have a, okay. Have a, have a detonation. So, so it's important to have those intake temps, and it's important to have them down in the colder temperatures. That's why... It's always better to have them down. And that's, that's why you intercool normally and do all these different things. This was a non-intercooled supercharger. Mm -hmm. So for my listener here, for, for Tane and his, his build with his his father and his grandfather, you would recommend a supercharger over a turbo mm -hmm. and make sure it's an intercooled supercharger. If you can. I mean, it's not necessarily a must. Uh, we did some things to get around the fact that we didn't have it intercooled to try and make some gains. First of all, we always did pulls at night. Yep. Uh, we had nitrous on it uh, going before and after the supercharger, which I don't know how much it actually helped, but we, did, we could see the intake temps kind of being held back by the nitrous being sprayed. And um, especially when winter hit, the car's power output changed dramatically. I mean, the temperature outside and the temperature in the intake basically justified how fast the car was. Wow. We did wow. 530 on the dyno without the nitrous. And we ended up breaking the car in the winter without the nitrous because it, it literally felt like it was going as fast, if not faster, without the nitrous. In, the, in those in those cold temperatures than it did while we were in the summertime with the nitrous. And we were doing 150 shot. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that is part of why his transmission is no more. Yeah, actually, um, second gear took, uh, you know, took its life, you know. <laughs> You're at mid, the top, mid, mid pull. At the top of the pull, not even going into the gear, it let out. As he uh, as he was about to get out of second gear. Wow! So wow! That's that's saying a lot because we were beating on it all all this last season. Yeah, yeah, at constant beating on this car, um, nonstop. We didn't, Several we didn't track really events, <laughs> track events, burnout events, everything, all of the above. So again, my guest is Brian Conrad, OBD One Kenobi. He is a uh, mechanic who has a shirt that says he is sometimes right. Sometimes. Uh, I need a shirt like that. I need a shirt that says I am occasionally right but most of the time not like the yeah. opposite of yours more like we're just stubborn yeah we're really stubborn <laughs> <laughs> there you go so hey i want to thank you for joining me on the show i also want to thank my listeners for listening to the show i want to thank tane for sending that comment in hopefully we answered it we probably didn't answer your question at all but there you go no no we'd answer it supercharger we, supercharger all Tor. day all of the tour all, all the tour, all the supercharger. Of course, you can subscribe to this show where fine shows and hey, this one are downloaded. Also, check out the Patreon. The speedcouncil.org is where you find that. And I'll see you right here, same time, same place next week.